Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you will learn how to generate design strips for a complex slab example in RAM concept. In this particular video, we're going to pay special attention to one of the bays in our sample model that has an irregular shape, specifically at the southern end of the structure. Now this is the way the model was generated, or the design spans were generated, when I created the design strips in the longitude direction. Here you can see that in this span, this is span 12-2 for this model, I have a middle strip that's getting fairly excessive over towards the left hand side. In general, you would want to avoid wide strips that average results over too large of an area, which is why we want to specifically take a look at this particular bay. In addition to that, I am going to also pay attention to the frames within a column line. Here you can see that I have span 12-1 that leads into span 12-2. And if I were to take a look at the width of the column strips between adjacent spans, I would see that there's quite a difference between the two particular areas. So let's go ahead and start addressing some of these situations in our longitude design spans plan. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and limit the width of this middle strip. And I'm gonna do that by creating a, a span boundary polyline, okay? So let's go ahead to our layer specific tools and we'll click on the span boundary polyline. Now all I'm gonna do for my model is I'm just going to snap a point and then pull it straight down. And of course you could use your engineering judgment and a review of your design strips perspective and reinforcement plans to kind of get a better idea about where you want to create this boundary. I'm going to go ahead and create mine here. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and take a look at is the width of the column strip from one bay to the adjacent bay. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the layer specific toolbar and select this column strip boundary polyline. And what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to go from this area and using my snaps, kind of connect it to the adjacent span. I can do the same thing at the other direction. Now that I've made those edits, let's go ahead and take a look at the properties of that span 12-2. So for the column strip width calc, I went ahead and put in some column strip boundary polylines. So I want to tell the program to go ahead and use those polylines when generating the column strip. Let's go ahead and change that to manual. Click OK. And then frequently throughout my process, I do like to just generate the strips to kind of basically see where I'm at. OK, so I can see that I fixed the issue here with the column strip and the adjacent span. I could see that I reduced the size of this middle strip, but now I'm going to take a look in this area. Here you're going to see that there is no hatching currently. If I wanted to take a look at what that would look like in the perspective plan, I can run a quick calculation and then take a look. Now the reason I'm running a quick calculation is because the actual official strips are created when the calculation is performed. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at that cross-sectional perspective area. And here we can see that there is an area of slab that is not contained or does not have any design strips in it. To get a clearer view of this, you can always turn on the slab plan, and I like to turn on the soffit sometimes so I can still see the design strips. And here again, I can see that there's a certain area of slab that's not covered by design strips. If I were to take a look at the longitude bar reinforcement plan, I could see that there's actually no reinforcement in that area. So let's go ahead and while we're taking a look at this irregular bay, adjust that. What I'm seeing that is needed right here is I would like to add an additional design span here and I'm gonna have it designed as a full width area. So over in my layer specific toolbar, 
I'm going to go ahead and click on this tool. This is a span segment tool and I'm going to review my properties. Now for the span width calc, now for the column strip width calc, I'm going to go ahead and say full width and then I'm going to review the rest of my parameters. Once I've done that, I can go ahead and create a new design span. I'm going to regenerate the strips at this point. Okay, so I have this new area of slab now covered by the new design span that is here. But what I'm gonna also notice though is that that actually kind of changed some of the boundaries for 11-2. Um, and what I wanna do is I want it really to pull these strips all the way out to this boundary. Now to do that, I'm gonna set the width calculation to manual. When I do that, basically what the program is gonna want is it's gonna want a manual strip on both sides. So let's go ahead and create a span boundary polyline on this side. And then let's adjust the parameters here. Here I'm gonna set the span width calculation to manual click OK, and then again I like to regenerate my strips. Now everything here looks a little bit better than it did before, so let's go ahead and re-perform a calculation, take a look at the reinforcement. Okay, let's go ahead and return to the reinforcement plan. I can see that I now do have bars that are detailed in this particular area, and I should have some uniform column widths that go from one bay to the next within a frame. Now, each bay within your model may be slightly different as far as when you start having irregular shapes. This is one solution that went ahead and worked well for this scenario. For any other scenario, I would also just double check your perspective plans and your bar plans and make sure that everything and make sure that all of your design spans are set up the way that you would want to design and detail your slab system. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.